And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars. But ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. And it came to pass when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. And they called the name of that place Bochim, and they sacrificed there unto the Lord. Like the people of the Most High and the Most High himself, the Holy Angel Michael's identity have been stolen by the kingdom of darkness to deceive the whole world. If anyone should know how it feel to see another group of people benefiting from your bloodline and legacy, it's this generation of Israelites waking up from their slumber. The Most High said he would provoke his people to jealousy with those who are not a people. The Most High said he would make his people angry by a foolish nation. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. If you have not seen part one of this message, I recommend that you go watch part one. I am glad that there were many people. The Most High has revealed the same revelation about the Holy Angel Michael. So many have said to me, they have known but kept it to themselves. When you live in a society that glamorized the Messiah as God in the beast religion, it's going to be difficult for some people to understand how deep the rabbit hole goes. The Holy Spirit must reveal this truth to the remnant and give them understanding to digest this meat. My role is to plant the seed. The Holy Spirit will do the rest of the work. Some people had the luxury of keeping this vital information to themselves. I don't have the same luxury. I must speak on what I was told so that nobody's blood will be on my hands. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. And thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. A lot of our people operate in a place of fear. The spirit of fear's purpose is to disable a person. That is why the Satans torment many with the spirit of fear. A lot of Israelites have not left Rome because they fear that if they forsake the doctrines of Rome, they would not make it into the kingdom. So many are enslaved to the altar raised to the man named Jesus Christ. The Most High did say his people would worship other gods. In the passage in the book of Deuteronomy, the Most High said, Since you made him jealous with what is not God, you provoke him to anger with idols, he returned a favor to you by choosing a foolish nation to make you angry. Some Israelites cannot comprehend the Most High and the judgments against them. Some Israelites are joining the foolish nation the Most High has chosen to provoke them to anger. The Most High said, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the Lord thy God, I will also forget thy children. Let us compare the scriptures to the doctrines from Rome. Some Israelites believe the Most High and the Messiah are the same, a doctrine they have heard from Rome. When the Most High gave his people the laws, statutes, and commandments in the generation of Moses, 
When our ancestors stood before the Most High, we stood there with them. They said they would worship the Most High and serve the Most High. Our ancestors and us said we will obey his statutes and commandments. We established a covenant that day. The covenant said the Most High is our God and we became his people. Ye stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God, your captains of your tribes, your elders, and your officers with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger that is in thy camp, from the hewer of thy wood unto the drawer of thy water. Thou shouldest enter into covenant with the Lord thy God, and into his oath, which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day, that he may establish thee today for a people unto himself, and that he may be unto thee a God, as he hath said unto thee, and as he hath sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not here with us this day. You heard the stipulation of the covenant. The Most High will be our God and we would be his people just as he promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Fast forward to this generation, what happened? How come we are now worshiping the Messiah instead of the Most High who descend in the presence of his people and made a covenant? A covenant is legally binding. Everything included in the covenant we must do. The covenant said to worship the Father, the Most High. The covenant did not say worship the Messiah. In the book of Revelation, John said he saw an angel flying in the midst of the heavens that had the gospel saying to fear the most high, give him the glory. The angel said, worship him that made the heavens and the earth. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. When the Messiah was speaking with the Pharisees in the book of John, the Messiah said if he honor himself, his honor is for nothing. The Messiah said it is the father that honors him. The Messiah went on to say to the Pharisees, you say my father is your God. The Messiah said, you don't know him. Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. The Pharisees, who were teachers of the law, they did not know the Most High, even though they had the laws. How can your oppressors who taught you the scriptures in the house of bondage know the Most High? You will not find the Most High in the house of bondage. He is not worshipped nor served there. The Messiah did not come to be worshipped nor seek glory for himself. The Messiah seek honor from the Father. The Messiah said to worship the Father. The angels say, worship him who created the heaven and the earth. Israelites, there is nothing wrong with worshiping the father. You're not going to be penalized for worshiping the father. You say you follow the Messiah and believe in him, yet you don't listen to him when he tell you to worship the father. You worship the Messiah because Rome told you to. Rome still have first place in your heart. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. When the Messiah said, you can't come to the father unless through him, where did the Messiah say to worship him? Or he is the father in that verse. The Messiah said, if you follow him, meaning his teachings, you will never taste death. If you follow the teachings of the Messiah, you will be honoring the father because the Messiah has come to teach you about the father and his statutes, commandments and laws. Following the Messiah's teachings will save your life. You still have to worship the father. 
The Messiah in the book of John referred to the Most High as his father. Many Israelites believe the Messiah and the father are the same because Rome told you. The Messiah came in the father's name just as the Most High sent his angel in the book of Exodus in his name. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. The covenant said the Most High would be our God and we would be his people. Every covenant the Most High made with his people, he was to be our God. The Most High warned his people not to worship any graven images, nor to have any other God before him. That is his first commandment. You say you love and serve the Most High, but you don't honor his commandments. The Most High said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Israelites, don't let the spirit of fear lead you into the sin of idolatry. The Messiah said all the people the father gave to him, none will be lost. He will raise them up in the last day. And this is the father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. If you're predestined to inherit eternal life, the father has placed you under the care of the Messiah. The Messiah said, none will be lost from the people the Most High gave him. The Most High gave him the righteous. Rome said, you must accept the Messiah as your savior. If you read the scriptures, the Messiah, the prophets, and the Most High said, when you repent with all of your heart and return to the Most High, then the Most High will reverse your captivity by sending your Redeemer. Judah said to his children before he transitioned to the afterlife, you will be delivered when you repent. John, who was the forerunner before the Messiah came, said, repent, the kingdom is at hand. Repentance is what triggered the awakening. It was not because you accepted Rome's doctrines and Messiah. Our ancestors accepted the idols of the heathens a long time ago and raised their children, you and me, in the pagan religion. That did not trigger the awakening. The book of Deuteronomy said it's when you start to remember yourselves and you repent and return to serve the Most High. Then the Most High will remember the covenant and will gather you in all the places you were scattered and save you. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac. And also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul, when thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shalt be obedient unto his voice. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swore unto them. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity, and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the utmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. Why did you have to return if Rome had it right? A lot of Israelites need to deal with those covenants they established in Rome. 
When the glory of the Most High was on Mount Sinai, our ancestors heard the voice of the Most High. They did not see the Most High. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Oreb out of the midst of the fire. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. The reason the Most High did not show any image of himself but show his glory, he did not want his people to create graven images to worship. Moses went on to say to our ancestors not to worship any of those graven images, anything in the heavens. Moses said not to worship the sun, the moon, and the stars. The Most High do not want his people to worship nothing but him. Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun, and the moon, and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldst be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. The first thing the heathens did was inserted their images into the scriptures. The book of Maccabees said they would do this. Rome has the ultimate graven image of a Messiah. This graven image is worshipped all over the world by Israelites and heathens. If Rome was serving the Most High, do you believe all the abominable graven images they depict in their sanctuaries of the Messiah, the disciples, and many other created beings would be accepted by the Most High? The Most High clearly say not to do this. What did the synagogue of Satan did in the beast religion and all the other religious faith in the beast culture? The beast system is plagued with graven images of the idols of the heathens. How can the people of the Most High continue to believe Rome? Rome has shown the ultimate disrespect for the Most High when they created several graven images and circulate those images to the four corners of this world. How are they serving the Most High when they are breaking the commandments of the Most High with the depiction of themselves as well as the Most High, the angels, and many other holy things of the Most High? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of any thing that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Israelites, you are without excuse. They force our ancestors to worship their idols doing slavery. Today, many of you choose to worship the idols of the heathens. Israelites and indigenous black people, are you going to continue to believe Rome? The Most High said his people would serve other gods in the land of their captivity. Gods their ancestors have not known. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Christianity is the largest religion in the beast culture with an estimated 2.6 billion followers. Majority of Israelites in the awakening came from Christianity. All of us, including myself, have worshipped the gods of Christianity. Many of us was led to believe the God in Christianity was the most high. Rome has indoctrinated us to believe the Messiah was also the Most High. Collectively, we worship the God and the Messiah of Christianity. If the God of Christianity was of the Most High, why did the Most High call majority of us in the awakening out of that religion? If Christianity and all the other religions was of the Most High and teaching truth, why do we need to come out of her? We are the generation living in the land of our captivity. The scriptures prophesied about us serving gods our ancestors have not known. Who are those gods the scriptures are talking about? Who are the gods our people are worshiping in the land of their captivity? Jesus and many others. If majority of us is serving Jesus in the land of our captivity, it would be safe to say Jesus is the God our ancestors have not known, a God made out of man's hands of wood and stone. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, 
and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. You can't serve the Most High in the Spirit and in truth if you are not going to listen to the truth. The time has come for you to know the truth. Idol worship plague our people from the beginning. If in Christianity we were taught that Jesus is the Most High and the Most High called us out of that religion, why are we continuing in that religion's doctrines of devils? A lot of Israelites turn the Christian God and Messiah black and continue with the idol worship. The Most High said there should be no other gods before me. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I am the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior, said the Most High. The Most High said in the book of Isaiah that you have not called upon him. You have been weary of him. If you're not calling on the Most High, who are you calling upon? But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob, but thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings, neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. Thou hast bought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices, but thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. How many times will the Most High say in the scriptures, there is no other gods besides him? The Most High said he doesn't know any. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And who is I shall call and shall declare it and set it in order for me? Since I appointed the ancient people, and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. The time has come for the Israelites to separate the Most High from the idols that are trying to steal first place in your heart. Another doctrine from the beast religion is that the Messiah is the Most High in the flesh. Let us study the scriptures together to see if that is true. When the Most High descend on Mount Sinai, our ancestors did not see the Most High. Our ancestors saw his glory. When they saw his glory and heard his voice, they couldn't take it. They thought they were going to die. The glory of the Most High is that great. And it came to pass, when ye heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire, that ye came near unto me, even all the heads of your tribes and your elders, and ye said, Behold, the Lord our God hath shown us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God doth talk with man, and he liveth. Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, then we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that hath heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire, as we have, and lived? The Most High did say he is a consuming fire. When the Most High's glory was on top of Mount Sinai, the scripture said his glory was like a devouring fire. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. When our ancestors heard the voice of the Most High, they said, who have heard the voice of the Most High and live? The scripture said, no one can see the Most High and live. The generation of our ancestors who heard his voice was astonished that they were able to live after the encounter. Our ancestors went on to say, let them not hear the voice of the Most High because it was that terrifying. 
Our ancestors only saw the glory of the Most High on Mount Sinai. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only ye heard a voice. If the glory of the Most High is that great, do you honestly believe the human body can contain the glory of the Most High? Remember, if Jesus is God in the flesh, he had an earthly body like yours and mine. Think about all that you experience in this body that house our spirit. Can you imagine the human body whose foundation came from the ground could contain the creator who made the ground? The scripture said in the second book of Chronicles that the heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain the most high. Do you believe the human body can handle the most high? But who is able to build him a house, seeing the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain him? Who am I then that I should build him a house, save only to burn sacrifice before him? But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven. And heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have builded. A lot of you truly do not know your creator whose image you're made of. Some of our people do not know how great our God is. Some of you cannot imagine his power. You know who can live in the human body? One of his created beings that is called by his name. The Most High will send his creatures to do his will on the earth. The angels are the ones who carry out the will of the Most High. The Most High decree it and the angels carry it out. When the angels do the will of the Most High, they do it in the Father's name. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. And when we cried unto the Lord, he heard our voice and sent an angel and hath brought us forth out of Egypt. And behold, we are in Kadesh, a city in the uttermost of thy border. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. The book of Revelation reveal how the angels opened the seals how the Most High will unleash his angels to destroy the kings of the earth. The holy angels of the Most High bring your prayers to the Most High. The angels are very involved with your everyday life. If the Most High wants to bless you, the Most High will send his angels to give you that blessing. When Daniel had a vision and he lacked understanding of the vision, the Most High sent Gabriel to give Daniel the interpretation of the vision. If you don't believe the angels are involved with your everyday life, what are their purpose? There is an angel that is assigned to every aspect of the most highest creation. Whoever is assigned, they are in charge. For example, the holy angel Uriel is over Tartarus. The holy angel Uriel is over that realm under the most high. There are angels assigned to every nation. The scriptures say we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. When it comes to the Israelites, the chosen people, no one is assigned to us but the Most High as our leader. Only the Most High is our King, Savior, and Redeemer. The Book of Jubilees confirm in chapter 15. When it comes to our deliverance, the Messiah will carry out the will of the Most High. Rome has polluted the word Messiah to get the world to worship the false Messiah. Messiah simply means anointed and deliverer. The Most High has assigned his holy anointed. The holy angel Michael is the one anointed and will carry out the will of the Most High of delivering our people. 
The time has come for the people of the Most High to come out of the Messiah worship. You must worship the Father. The book of John said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If you continue to read, verse 14 reveal how the Word became flesh. The Most High is love, and there is a spirit of love. Israelites, you have to dig deeper than the surface when reading the scriptures. Wisdom is a spirit. The scripture said the Most High give you wisdom. Everything the Most High created is alive. Some of his creation are visible while some are invisible. Chapter 1 in the book of John is talking about how the Messiah came into the world. Chapter 1 is not saying how the Most High came into the world, but how the Messiah, who was once with the Most High in the heavens, became flesh. Israelites, the Most High said, you cannot please him in the flesh. The Most High said the flesh and spirit are at odds with each other. Why would the creator who is spirit become flesh to do his will? He doesn't need to do that to accomplish his will on earth. The Most High would send one of his holy sons to do his will. The Most High tell us not to fight in the flesh. Why would the Most High become flesh to fight spirit? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. The sons of God are the angels. A God can be angels, a lesser God. The scripture said money is a God. Prince are also angels. Prince are high-ranking angels. And Elohim can be an angel as well. Just because the scripture said the word was God, it doesn't mean the most high. The book of John said that the Messiah was not born of blood, nor of the will of men, but from the Most High. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. A lot of Israelites in the awakening have reduced the Messiah to a man. Some Israelites reduced the Messiah to a man to prove to the heathens that the Messiah is not of their stock. The heathens know that the Messiah is not of them. That is why they help hung him and the heathens continue to hang the people that look like him until this day. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. What white man do you know that has ever been hung on a tree to save humanity? They're the ones helping the Satans destroy the earth. You don't need to prove anything to the heathens. The book of John let us know although the Messiah came from the tribe of Judah, from the lineage of David, the Messiah was not of flesh and blood. Even the Messiah said before Abraham he existed. The angels were created before Adam. I have a book that I've read, which I will not disclose this book as of yet. I will insert some of the writings from that book. In the book it said Michael was present when the Most High created Adam. The scriptures confirm that when Joseph took Mary for a wife, he saw that she was already pregnant. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost.
Although the Messiah came from the tribe of Judah because he was born through Mary's womb, Mary descend from the tribe of Judah as well as Joseph, the Messiah is not flesh and blood like us. Joseph did not father the Messiah. That is why the Messiah is known as the only begotten son of the Most High. The Messiah is the only son of God that was sent into the world in that manner. The Messiah came through Mary's womb so that he can obtain human flesh like ours, but his creation is not like us. That is why the Messiah can say to the Pharisees, before Abraham, I am. Israelites, do you honestly believe the Most High who have the power to kill the body and spirit need to come off his throne to destroy the Satans and his army of flesh? Who can stand against the army of the Most High? Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? The Most High is the head of his army. The Holy Angel Michael is the commander in chief of that army. Israelites, the Most High can defeat the Satans without coming off his throne. Matter of fact, the Satans and the entire kingdom of darkness is already defeated. Their fate is sealed. The book of Enoch revealed Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Phanuel would cast the Satans into the lake of fire. And Michael and Gabriel and Raphael and Phanuel shall take hold of them on that great day and cast them on that day into the burning furnace that the Lord of spirits may take vengeance on them for their unrighteousness in becoming subject to Satan and leading astray those who dwell on the earth. What do the Most High look like coming off his throne to beat up his creatures? Who can stand against the Most High? The scripture said, we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers. The Most High will assign another prince to fight the evil prince of this world. Remember, the Most High will use the things the world deem foolish to shame the proud. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised. Hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Let us talk about the great prince that is over our people, the holy angel Michael. Michael is the head angel. He is over all the angels. Michael is the number one son of God. That is why he is always ranked first in the scriptures. Before the Messiah was known to us as Jesus in the New Testament, the Most High would send his angel to do his will. Oftentimes in the Old Testament, the angel of the Lord is mentioned. The heathens believe the angel of the Lord is the Messiah in the Old Testament. If the heathens teach that the angel of the Lord is the Messiah in the Old Testament, how come in the New Testament he is no longer an angel but God in the flesh? And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. The holy angels, such as Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel, can act on the behalf of the Most High. The Most High, the Israelites, the Messiah, the prophets, and the nations in the scriptures receive a makeover in the New Testament. Everyone transformed into white people in the New Testament. Despite the indigenous black people being the original people, the blueprint to the human species. If you allow the heathens to tell the story, black people don't exist in the Bible. There's a new God, chosen people, Messiah, geographical location of the holy places, and prophets in the New Testament. The New Testament is an imitation of the Old Testament by the Satans. Despite of the alterations done to the scriptures, the truth is hidden in the New Testament. Every angel and creature created by the Most High has a name. When the heathens replace the names with titles, 
titles such as the angel of the Lord, they are trying to conceal information from you. The angel of the Lord simply means a messenger sent by the Most High. Repeatedly in the scriptures, the Messiah said, the Father sent him. And the Father himself which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asketh me, Whither goest thou? For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. The Most High always sent his angels to do his will. If the Most High say, I will bless thee today, the Most High will send his angels to bless me. The Most High will decree it and the angel of the Lord will perform the miracle on the behalf of the Most High. That is how the angels come in the Father's name. If the blessing is coming from the Most High, the holy angels will carry out the will of the Father. If the Satan's is deceiving you, then a demon, a worker of iniquity, or a fallen angel will come to trick you with a cursed gift. The Most High always sent his holy angels or messengers to do his will. The Messiah was always about his father's business. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Repeatedly, the Messiah said his father sent him. The Most High has sent the holy angel Michael to do his will multiple times. Michael fought against the prince of Persia that was withholding another angel with a message for Daniel. The title, the angel of the Lord, stopped once the Messiah was born in the New Testament. Jacob called the Messiah Shiloh in the Old Testament. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Shiloh is defined as heavenly peace or peaceful one. Another definition for Shiloh is a gift from God. The book of Isaiah called the Messiah a gift and the prince of peace. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The holy angel Michael is the Son of God, the great Prince, and his name means one who is like God as well as a gift from God. The first part of this message talk about this. The Messiah is known as the angel of the Lord and Shiloh in the Old Testament. The scriptures also call the Messiah the Lion from the tribe of Judah. The Most High promised that the Messiah will be a root that will come out of Jesse, who is the Redeemer of Israel. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. When you read about the rod that is coming out of Jesse's roots, he will be a beacon of hope for the Israelites as well as the Gentiles. The root that is coming out of Jesse will stand as an ensign of the people. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. The rod that is coming out of the root of Jesse, that will be an ensign, will stand for the Israelites and the Gentiles. I read in the scriptures of the Deliverer or Messiah that is coming in the last days to save Israel from Jacob's trouble, the day our people will be saved, all whose name is written in the book. This deliverer will also stand for the Israelites on that day, the great prince. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. 
the root that is coming out of Jesse will stand for the righteous and the great prince will stand for our people as well. Very similar. Rome has taught you that the Messiah is the king of the Jews. The book of Revelation said the Messiah is the prince of the king of the earth. The book of Daniel said the men of sin or the Antichrist will stand up against the prince of princes. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Remember, prince in the scriptures are angels. Who is the prince of princes? Michael is the great prince and the chief prince according to the scriptures. The third book of Baruch said that Michael is the commander of chief of the angels. The book of Baruch said the holy angel Michael have the keys to the kingdom. The angel takes Baruch to the next heaven, identify as the fifth heaven, where Baruch faces the closed gate upon which the names of men are inscribed. The gate opens only to admit the commander in chief, Michael, the key holder of the kingdom, descending from behind it with a great sound to receive the prayers of men. He holds a cosmically sized bowl into which the virtues of men enter in order to be brought in it to God. In the book of Matthew, the Messiah said to Peter that he would give him the keys to the kingdom of heaven. The revelation you heard about Michael in the book of Baruch said, Michael is the commander of chief and the gate only opens to him. How can the Messiah give Peter the keys to the kingdom if the Messiah is not the holy angel Michael? The book of Isaiah said the Messiah would be a commander to the people. Incline your ear and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. For those who don't believe the holy angel Michael is the Messiah, the prince, the book of Daniel confirm. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. The Messiah is prophesied to come to defeat the evil princes of this earth. We need a warrior to destroy the workers of iniquity and the God of this world who so happen to be a prince as well. The holy angel Michael is that warrior angel. Rome has taught you that the prince of peace is this gentle Messiah that died on the cross. Rome made the Messiah a character that came to this earth and got destroyed. The Messiah said, I did not come to bring peace on earth. The Messiah overturned tables when the workers of iniquity turned his father's house into a den of thieves. How can the Messiah be the lion of the tribe of Judah and is not a warrior? Judah, the progenitor of the tribe of Judah, was a warrior. He destroyed armies by himself. What about David and his ten thousands? And it came to pass as they came. When David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that women came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tablets, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. How can the Messiah be the lion from the tribe of Judah and not be a warrior, and the warrior spirit is in his tribe? How can the Messiah be a deliverer that is not a warrior? The Most High set the chief warrior over his people, his only begotten son. With him he is well pleased. How can the Messiah deliver us from Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation, if he is not the prince of princes? The holy angel Michael is the leader of the angels, a great warrior. The holy angel Michael is second in command. He is the Messiah, the deliverer. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed.
to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Israelites, you can accept the weak Messiah of Rome if you want, but I choose to believe what the scriptures say about the holy angel Michael. In the book of Revelation, John was speaking with an angel. Remember, whenever the heathens want to deceive you, they don't disclose the name of the angel or person. Just like how they remove the name of the Most High from the scriptures. How can Rome serve the Most High and remove his sacred name from the authorized version of the scriptures they made available to the public? The workers of iniquity replace the holy names with the names of their pagan gods. The angel that was speaking with John was showing John the words of the book. Once John saw the things in the book, he proceeded to bow down to worship the angel that was showing him these things. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. Look how easily John wanted to worship an angel. It doesn't surprise me that our people are constantly misled into idol worship. The indigenous black people will worship and transform anything into a god. Israelites, it is important to read the scriptures with the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit can point out what is hidden in plain sight. We know in the book of Revelation chapter 22 that an angel was showing John the sealed things in the book and the angel was explaining everything to John. The angel said to John, I will come quickly. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. If you continue to read the verses in chapter 22 of the book of Revelation, the angel again said, I will come quickly. This time when the angel said, I will come quickly, the scriptures is highlighted in red. The King James Version of the Bible or any red edition Bibles highlight the scriptures in red when the Messiah is speaking. In the same chapter, verse 12, the angel that was speaking with John said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work. When the angel said, I come quickly, it was highlighted in red. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. The things we don't pay attention to in the scriptures be the most revealing spiritual insight. The Holy Spirit is the only one who can show you these things. Reading the Bible like an ordinary book from front to back, the spirit of confusion will frustrate you. That is why you need the Holy Spirit. The heathens altered the scriptures to deceive the people with their interpretation of the scriptures. However, the workers of iniquity underestimated the power of the Holy Spirit who can fill in the blanks. Israelites, I can show you scriptures upon scriptures. I can recommend books for you to read that can help you with your understanding. When it comes to this message, the Most High has to reveal it to you just as he did with me and countless others who remain silent when they receive the revelation. If your mind and heart has already accepted Rome's version of the story, part three, four and five of this message is useless to you. This message will be received by the remnant who is working out their own salvation with fear and trembling. Because the Most High said, if you seek me, you will find me if you look for me with all of your heart. And ye shall seek me and find me 
when ye shall search for me with all your heart. If the Israelites and the indigenous black people are truly seeking the Most High, they will discover truth that don't align with what they were taught in Rome. It will require great faith to believe what the Spirit of the Most High is revealing to his people. I hope the remnant have faith like our father Abraham that just believed the Most High and it counted unto him as righteousness. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Who is the Messiah, the prince, the kingdom will be restored to in the book of Daniel? Know therefore, and understand, that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks, and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times. Israelites, I can give you scriptures after scriptures that will reveal the role of the holy angel Michael. However, if your mind is made up and not open to truth, this message will go over your head. For some people, it will be difficult to understand this message because your spirit is still tied to the evil altars of Rome. My role is to plant the seed. I hope the people of the Most High are doing their part by seeking the face of the Most High. I guarantee when the Israelites and Gentiles humble themselves and actually do some research on the holy angel Michael, they will come to the same conclusion. Most people are too afraid to do the work. Like the indigenous black people all over the world and the Most High, the holy angel Michael's identity has been hijacked. Rome has given you a watered down version of the story. Today, the Most High is sanctifying you with his truth. His word is truth. The Most High always give his people a choice. Israelites, choose ye this day. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, and which did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the way wherein we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God.